Hey everybody, this is Jim Hackenberg. I'm at Orange Whip World Headquarters. This morning, I'm joined by Brian Newman, PGA member and developer of the Golf Fitness X program, and he's teamed up with us at Orange Whip, and we're out to improve golfers' bodies and golf swings. But we got a really cool guest today. We got Kevin Britt. Kevin Britt's a PGA member in the Carolina section. He was the 2016 Youth Player Development Award winner. He's worked with numerous PGA Tour pros, LPGA Tour pros. He's got an amazing amount of, what I'm most impressed is he's had 80 kids get college scholarships through his development program as juniors. And actually something like 30 plus, 35 in the last six years. So that blows me away to think that he's had that many kids that he can take from their junior level all the way up to the college scholarship level. So that's impressive to me. So in the Carolinas, this is the guy you want to go to if your kid wants to go to the next level. But what we're going to do today, we're going to talk a little bit about Orange Whip products. We're going to talk a little bit about the GFX and the Power Peel and a lot of the applications for that. But we're just basically out here to try to find some things you can do to get back into the game. We've all been kind of stuck inside. And this is a good way to share some ideas and some concepts that, that these guys use to get people ready to play. And like I said, there's nobody better than, than Kevin to do this because he's had such success with young players. But Kevin, let's start out with you work also with uh, PGA Tour player William McGirt. And obviously he's coming off an injury, but then also the tour is on, you know, it's, it's on pause for right now. So you guys are just starting to get ready because I think back in probably mid-June, they're going to start the tour again. Is there anything unique or different that you've been doing to get your player or to get William ready to get out there again? Yeah, I guess the toughest thing is, you know, simulating competition. So, and William's been out for a while. He had uh, two hip surgeries. So uh, during that time, he's, he's had a lot of time off to, to rest and rehab. He's been rehabbing, you know, pretty regularly uh, over the last 20 months or so uh, with the two surgeries. Uh, but, uh, he's hitting it good now, probably as good as he's, as he's hit it in a long time. Uh, so for him, it's a matter of uh, getting out and playing, uh, simulating some competition, and, uh, and kind of dialing in that short game in. Um, really looking to, uh, you know, t practice on tour-like conditions with firm greens and fast greens and stuff like that. So sometimes it's uh, – sometimes I think it's a challenge, you know, just to kind of simulate that and, and kind of get ready back out there for competition. That's probably the biggest hurdle right now. Is there anything you do to simulate that competition? Because you're right. I mean, there's a lot of guys I've known in my life who hit it like studs, but then they when they get in competition, they don't do it. What do you guys do? Because you've had a lot of players go to the next level. So there, is it that you're helping them find this competitive edge or are they just that type of individual? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Um, we're, um, we're kind of getting on the road when we can. Uh, we just got back two days ago from Pinehurst, played two rounds at Pinehurst number two and uh, practiced on the cradle as well. And there's a bunch of short game up there. So uh, trying to make conditions tough. So obviously that's a really tough golf course. And, um, you know, his ball striking held up pretty well down there. And uh, we've also made some trips down to Florida over the wintertime, once again, trying to get ready. He's, you know, he's still rehabbing. So I wouldn't say he's 100% back, but he, he's getting pretty close. Um, I guess the goal is to get out and compete pretty soon. So, you know, just kind of getting on the road, playing different courses, different styles of courses and different types of courses that, you know, I'm trying to make it tough as we can right now to kind of simulate that PGA Tour condition. That's great. Hey, hey let me, Kevin, let me bring in Brian here because Brian, I, yeah, I was gonna think because we've talked about the GFX and the power peel that you've created competitive aspects to to the workouts. Is that accurate? Yes. Yeah, so we, um, our workouts can be, you know, obviously they're scalable for everybody. But what we can do is, you know, we've kind of leaned on calling it the sport of practice, the sport of golf fitness. So our workouts, um, and you know, Kevin, you're familiar with them. You can, uh, based on your performance, you can track your reps. Um, in our old format, we used to uh, track your time. So, Kevin, some of the workouts you saw during, you know, you went through our certification program, um, we would actually track your time. But what we mean by reps is if we, if we do two rounds of um, a circuit, and let's say we do three movements, during that minute, if you track how many reps you perform, you can compete um, as well, 
with other people. So if Jim and I were um, doing a workout together and we counted reps, we could compete. And the, the kicker is you want to make sure that, that those reps are correct. So to do it with a GFX coach is helpful because you can no rep people. Um, but it's a fun way to compete. And we were tracking, you know, we were doing live squads together and um, I was posting how many reps I was doing and challenging the Orange Whip guys to, to try to keep up. So yeah, there is a competitive side where it's focusing more on the process of the body movements um, than keeping your score. So we were just, we were running off that saying, hey, everybody's stuck inside. Let's keep that competitive edge. And you know, it's a proven fact that if you add competition to exercise, it increases output. Um, it's why CrossFit's very successful. And it's a fun way for your juniors to work out without realizing that they are. Um, yeah, so Jim, that's that competitive side that we have. And we're working on some new um, things as well to further be able to track their performance during our workouts. Um, so there's some cool things we'll, we'll continue to come out with. Um, but Kevin, I got a question for you with, with working with, um, with, um, Will and, and his rehab around his hip, you and I've had some discussions about it. You know, we've looked at different, uh, movements on the peel and things like that. You know, obviously having a player that's as talented as he is and coming back from, you know, an injury, what were some things as an instructor that you did? Um, obviously I'm sure he had his regiment with trainers and things like that, but what were some things that you did to train his coordination with that new, uh, you know, working through that new hip and, and things like that? Yeah. Um, so after the, after the first surgery, we really kind of went back and just looked at some basic stuff. And I mean, it was as simple as just kind of doing some basic, just real basic movements and hitting it really easy, even kind of just, you know, going through the motions and, even like a chipping stroke for a little while, you know, just to kind of get him moving correctly. Because one of the things he really wanted to do is kind of to revamp his golf swing, you know, post-surgery. So um, it was just, it was just taking that, those small movements and, and just kind of starting from there and then working up and up to speed. But it, it definitely took a while. I mean, we were really super patient with it and it took a while. And then, you know, he was working with the, uh, he had a surgery up in Nashville and he was working with the, the rehab people up there as well as some locals as well. So um, they were handling a lot of that, but we did do a lot of golf specific, simple movements to start with. Um, he was uh, lacking a little depth in his backswing previously. Uh, the hip was causing some of that, but that's also how he was swinging uh, probably for years. So really concentrated on creating a little more depth in his backswing, a little more rotation in the hips, getting his, uh, his right, his trail hip to kind of get a little deeper and uh, we spent a bunch of time doing that, and and uh, he was super steep with his swing. I think when I started working with him a couple of years ago, I mean, he was like 10 degrees with a 7-iron, so really worked wow. on yeah. hollowing out um, and creating a lot more depth in the backswing and a lot more width in the downswing to shell everything out, even to a point where we get him swinging, you know, way right at some point in time and then kind of got it back to square now. So it's awesome. like said, he's hitting really well right now. Yeah, so what I love about that is, um, for the viewers out there, you could see that obviously there's a lot of rehabilitation of the body, but what Kevin was describing that, you know, doing it around the golf swing is so important because, you know, just making that comeback and all of a sudden having a new hip um, and then trying to swing the old way, you've got to train that coordination as the body is doing that. So that was one of my questions is, you know, when you look at his – swing when you know he's winning on tour versus now there you know you see some changes obviously with that new hip and his ability to use it a little bit better absolutely um and uh two years ago uh he was up at reno and if if he had the ball below his feet at all like he literally from like 200 yards 150 yards 210 yards if he had a substantial amount of slope with the ball below his feet, he literally couldn't turn. So everything would go about 120 yards and left. And uh, wow. and he had a chance to uh, to win that with an eagle on the last hole, and a birdie would have got him in second place. But the ball was way below his feet, and he ended up pulling into the stands, and he ended up scrapping out a par. So he ended up finishing top 10. But I think he shot 63 the last day with his hip ball kind of mangled up. So Yeah, yeah. 
No, that's crazy how much more the skills have to be called upon when that the lies change, right? You have to be able to adapt your turn, your rotation, your swing plane, things like that. So, um, no, it sounds like you've done some cool things. I'm, I'm uh, excited to see him swinging the club. Well, and, you know, what's interesting is with when I first met Brian and got to know more about GFX and then how he applied GFX to this power peel, which is great for setting the hips in, 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 a, in a, basically in an athletic position – He's been able to take situations like you're talking about with William where he had no depth in that and he was getting steep. You could take an individual, if you know what the issue is, Brian could kind of come up with a pretty unique format of exercises and drills to do on the power peel. And then basically it's just it's encouraging that player to do it. So let's just say that. Let's say we have a, a fix. How your players, Kevin, are they – is it easy for them to – to stay disciplined to what they're trying to do? Or do you got some guys who waver, some players who waver? Or how does that work out for you? Yeah, I think, you know, level of player, I think the better the player, the more, a little bit more uh, they're willing to, to make some change if they know it's going to help them a lot. So having a little bit of patience, some players don't have that. But uh, I think that, you know, when you look at big picture stuff, they're willing to make those changes and be patient with those, uh, especially coming off an injury like, like William was. So. Um, yeah. Now with uh, I caddied for a little while on the PGA Tour, and as a caddy, you, you, I mean there's certain physical things you need to do, but there's a lot of emotional things. As a coach, Kevin, for your young players or your tour players, how much do you feel you're an emotional influence? Like, cause when people are coming back from a, from an injury or or they've lost their game and they're trying to come back, do you feel you're heavy on that end, or do you just provide them structure and they, they either take it or they don't? Uh, no, you know, you wear a lot of different hats. Um, we're trying to uh, encourage and be a coach and be supportive. And sometimes you need to be a little bit firm, too, if, they, if you feel like, you know, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. So I think you wear a lot of different hats. But, uh, you know, it's always, I think always being positive, always encouraging, and, um, and just trying to be that, you know, try, try to live the way that you'd like them to be a little bit from a mentor standpoint. I think, you know, when I'm around the country club Spartanburg like I am, and we have a lot of the kids here trying to create a culture, you know, try to do the right thing so they kind of see what you're doing as well. And we have some great other professionals here that help us with, with that as well. Yeah, that's good. That's good stuff. Uh, Brian, is there any um, – because we've been talking about rehab, and Brian knows that I had a rotator cuff surgery a year and a half ago. So I'm trying to get my – basically my arm functioning very well for golf again. And surprisingly, after the surgery, it's been quite good. One of the simple things I've done with this power peel, and Brian has to talk us through it a little bit as I do it, but I've wanted to get – I'm really thinking about it from the golf swing motion. So I want my arm to move properly, but I want it to move properly in the golf swing. So Brian's got a little setup for me that's pretty easy where I take the black band and the orange band and the handle, and I put it in peel position four, I'll get into my golf stance, but I basically do what would be considered like a cross body crunch, but from the tilted position so that my shoulder plane stays underneath. So I'm getting a good workout to the shoulder that was so weak a year ago. So now I'm actually yeah. in a stiff, stiff band. I'm able to do it. So talk yeah, so what you're training. Stuff. Yeah. So what, what you're able to do with that, you know, like Kevin was talking about is where you're, because we're using bands and resistance and we have three different resistance bands, there's a rehabilitation aspect to that power peel. Um, so, you know, we're not putting a bunch of load on it. We're not using a dumbbell and fighting against gravity the whole time. There's that gradual increase. So what's neat about that move, Jim, that you're doing is you're training your posture, your torso rotation, your hip rotation, you're on the peel. So you're having to work against the sides of that thing. But then obviously you're working your golf specific motion of being able to internally rotate that trail uh, shoulder as you're getting those muscles and tendons to re-understand that movement pattern uh, since your surgery. So, you know, that's a simple one that, you know, people always ask me, well, what if I have a limitation? And my first question is, well, if you have a limitation, are you rehabilitating it? And if the answer is it's a debilitating injury, like you don't have a limb or something like that, obviously we've got to work around it. But if you go to rehab and you talk to a, you know, we're not, we're not physical therapists by all means 
but the bands and the way that we're using that can really speed up your coordination and your rehabilitation of your golf swing. Um, so that's what's neat about Jim, kind of what you're doing there. And, you know, one thing, Jim, I'm going to have you do another move because I love to show Kevin this stuff. Uh, Kevin kind of some of the things he always wants to see his students do. I love the interaction we have together. So, Jim, pop that, um, that band set up off of four and put it on peel position two for me with the, uh, with the handle, just like how you have it. So, Kevin, I'm going to show you this move. I think you'll like this. All right. And I'm going to have you describe um, kind of what you could use it for. So, Jim, do you tell me when you're set up? I'm, I can't see I'm you. ready. Yep. Ready to All go. All right. So, from there, yeah, go ahead and keep that band in your right hand and set up like it's a golf grip. Basically, okay. so let the right hand hang like you've got it in a golf grip. Perfect. Now, take your left arm off of the yep. grip, and I want you to tuck your – so here, watch me real quick if you can see me. I want you to tuck your left arm. There you go, perfect. So now right there, what we've done is we've created uh, a basically a cage or a, an assist motion for how that trail elbow works. So now when we, you know, this will help the shoulder too. So go ahead and make a backswing for me. So that palm is gonna help trap that. You've got some stiff bands on there, don't you? Yep. <laughs> yeah, so we'd potentially go lighter. So go ahead and do that again, and I want you to stay in your posture for me a little bit more. Right, so keep your eyes focused where the ball would be. Okay, Good. Yeah. so do it a couple more times. And then you can go into impact. So, Kevin, this is one that I love that, you know, you work with a lot of young players. How much do you see that early extension trail arm get stuck behind? Um, so oh, this yeah. is one we call elbow block. So from a shoulder rehabilitation standpoint, Jim, this is a great one for you to use too, um, yeah. because we're going to be working that rotator cuff. I would encourage you obviously to start with a lighter band resistance as we work those extremity movements. Um, but that's a cool movement to work on that rotator cuff. Cause how many guys, you know, we know this 90, 90 test, right? There's a lot of players um, who struggle to get that mobility so we can work all day to get that, but if we don't know how to encourage that during the golf swing, um, you know, it's tough to put it in play. So, uh, you know, that's kind of what that movement, you know, Kevin, you're always saying, so what if I have a player that does this or does that? Um, so I think that's kind of cool. So while we're actually on that, I want to show you something. Uh, you were talking about Will and, and the downhill lie. Um, so again, we the skills really have to pick up. So I want to show you a new toy we got coming out that we'll have to send to you. Um, I'm going to just share my screen here. All right. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'll explain it. Um, so I'm actually standing on a downhill lie and, you know, the belt with the power peel. What we've done and, and you know, I would say that, again, I always joke around with you guys and say you're on the advisory board of GFX. You just don't know it yet. So one of the things is traveling with the peel. So I know we've cut the peel in half. Uh, for Will to try to, you know, use it a little bit more. And I want to talk about, you know, how he uses that specifically. But now we're actually in the process. We've got a foot strap coming out that actually goes around the foot and goes through the, uh, basically the arch of the foot and around the spikes. So now you can use the belt. So you weren't able to see that, but I was standing on a downhill lie and connected to the belt and my feet. So now we're actually training in that ball striking situation and able to actually, if I want to add hip depth, I can pull on that hip and connect it to my foot and actually encourage that feel as we do it too. So um, we really hope this is really aimed towards our tour players and our, and our traveling golfers um, where they can pop, you know, work on the power peel at home, pop off the bands and then go strike balls with it on, you know, and travel with it and just throw it in your bag. So we've got that coming out pretty soon. And again, that was kind of inspired by tour players and wanting to be able to travel with that assistance and resistance thing. So um, we'll have to shoot one over to you as we get, we've got some prototypes now. And, um, but uh, explain how you use the, or how Will uh, uses the peel. I know you do some cool stuff. I know we saw a video yesterday of you using the peel to work on some, some ground force, getting that trail leg to do that. What are some of the things that you work on with the peel with your students? And, you know, you can talk about Will or I just want to hear some of the unique ways you do it because that was pretty cool yesterday. Yeah, I mean, I can kind of go over what I did yesterday because that's pretty cool. Uh, the other thing with him, originally we got it so he could work on uh, kind of body to move uh, kind of what would simulate a downslope. So, I mean, I can show you guys yeah. some of that. I've got it sitting here. But uh, um, And then the other thing we did was a little bit of uh, uh, ground force. Uh, 
kind of pressure work yesterday, and I was working with uh, one of my students from Farming, Carly Burkhart, and uh, I sent you guys a, a tape of that, which which was pretty cool. But to kind of explain what we were doing, I think would would help. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys want to see what I was doing with that, I can show you. Yeah. So, and I can kind of explain it, but. Um... What Kevin was working on with his student was during the downswing and initiating, you know, the downswing, we we're trying to get that trail foot to, to go more external. So I would imagine is that player kind of more of a slider where we see that lower body run out and we really don't have any, any downforce before we get the impact and start going up. Yeah, she, she just gets a little bit of early extension. So really working on that, on that uh, external rotation, that right side kind of pushing off almost kind of backwards. And getting a little linear before rotation and adding some vertical as well. So uh, I think for her, it really helped because after, you know, she was hitting balls after we did that for a while. And I mean, it was incredible, you know, her uh, progress with her ball striking really turned up. And yeah. Just... No, I love that. So not only are you working on the coordination and how to feel that, but naturally she's going to have to work those hip muscles, that hip joint. So she's also encouraging body improvements. You know, and, and what I think a lot of golfers, and this will be good for the viewers, is they think that that weight goes left very, very fast and that all that pressure moves left when actually a lot of players, and you can elaborate on it if you want to, but we see more of the, of the pressure that creates that first, you know, you've got that first lateral and then that rotary force. Really, a lot of it comes from that trail foot. And if you don't have it, if you don't have weight there to use it, you're going to lose a lot of power and probably lose your posture. Is that kind of what you, what you see? Right, yeah, and I feel like it is a lot. I mean, I feel like that's where a lot of the power is coming from for, you know, some of the better players I teach. A lot of them might not think about it like that, but that's kind of what I see going on. Um, you know, you'll see somebody over swing real hard and their right foot kind of slips back behind them. I mean, they're getting a lot of force going back. Yeah. Real real. Yeah, and uh, so you see that, but with, with spikes, you don't see them slip as much, but every now and again, you'll see them slip or something like that. But there's a lot of force being put into that right side and that trail foot. So uh, I work a lot with that, and I think it's important to, for them to kind of be aware of, of that uh, ground force and, and where it's coming from. But uh, I have a tendency to try to overdo it a lot, so it kind of changes a lot to change a little. Um, well, yeah, Kevin, bend the bar too far so it meets in the middle. Love it. And, Kevin, you, uh, you obviously work with a lot of juniors and developing players. From my experience with teaching, most people just use their hands and upper body to hit the ball. So we've, as teachers, we've got to get the ground force is involved so that they understand that the lower body has such an impact on that or such an effect. So you, we've been talking a bit about that, but you, the first time I met you, Kevin, I believe was in Columbia, uh, South Carolina, and you had talked about the uh, product you had developed and it had to do, I don't want to give away the name for you, but uh, you talked about it, and that had to do with a lot of the way with the ground and then what you had uh, up against the backside of one of your players. So tell me a little bit about that and why you utilize that, because, again, my experience is so many choppers are over the top, they don't use the lower body properly. So talk about that for a second. Yeah, so I'll talk about that. Um, so years ago, probably, uh, golly, almost 20 years ago now, came up with this product called the butt board. And it was the first design. John's bringing it over, but so basically, uh, we got it set up on, on a countertop type situation, and uh, I'll have players actually hit. We take this outside, inside or outside. Uh, you know, it's heavy duty type steel, big solid base. And um, anyway, we work on that with uh, you know maintaining spine angle, uh, getting rid of early extension. Also, if I want to push in the left side, we actually would push that lead hip back into that board and create a little bit of extra, like I said, kind of overdoing to change a little bit. So, um, it's, uh, I feel like it's it's pretty cool. I never marketed it. I probably had seven pros buy, buy a few from me, but uh, I haven't pushed the product or anything like that. I mean, we talked about it a long time ago, but I uh, haven't done any of that. That'd be cool to use with the foot straps or uh, have you put it on the peel before? Kind of like put the peel on top of it or anything like that? Yeah, well, it's the, yeah, so I haven't done that, but I'll put the peel opposite, you know, on the other side. So yeah, yeah. I a bunch of movements together, so it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Kind of set it up and you're creating a, a training platform per se, you know, for these students to get them to really feel some good stuff, so. Yeah. 
So I love all the training stuff. So if I'm, you know, this is, we did a little show on this last Thursday. Uh, I did it with an instructor who had a kid he worked with when he was 12 years old. What would be some of, you know, give me three things that would be the advice when you get a player who's, you know, 12, 13, 14, who's, you know, got a chance uh, to at least play college golf, right? What are kind of some of the steps that you take with that player? Because you know how, I mean, how fragile that is. They could go one way or the other very quickly. Um, and it really depends on the coach with the sport of golf. So what are some things that you do um, with your younger players that have potential? I think, um, I think over the years, you know, depending on where I was at, um, and we, we've done it here at the Country Club of Spartanburg, um, creating a, a culture, an environment, almost uh, a team type training with the kids that are here. So we came here, um, uh, the three of us, uh, we have uh, myself and John Weiss and Tyler Cochran that teach all the juniors. Well, we're trying to take these kids, uh, number one, trying to get them to learn how to compete, learn how to have fun, learn how to love the game, but also get them to play a lot more. So we want to really get those kids on the course, get them to play. So like, uh, <laughs> Um, when uh, when they were out of school, we did a big skins competition to get them out to play and, and really try to get them to shoot low. So we want them to go out and make as many birdies and eagles as possible and to play a lot. But we've created this this culture of kids, and I've had it at previous places I was, especially down in Irmo at Weed Hill Driving Range, um, that we get these kids together, they play together, they compete against each other, they push each other, they encourage each other, they get on each other. So not only, um, you know, my one of the coaches, but they they coach each other to some extent, and that way they have some accountability. So basically, you know, going into a facility, creating a culture, creating an environment of learning, a fun, uh, you know, a fun atmosphere of learning, but also a positive, but uh, challenging, you know, set up some challenging situations for them to compete and practice. And I think it's probably more more important than anything. And then, you know, and then some kids will run with it and some kids won't, but uh, for the most part, we've had some good success. Yeah, so I love that that, that actually, you know, it makes all the sense in the world because it really goes back to um, that environment that you're creating and then the output of, of how many kids have been uh, doing well. Because, you know, I think that's a huge key for instructors out there, you know, with with juniors that it's like they have the best swing they've ever seen. They can never understand, you know, they, they pure it in a practice round or on the range and they can never understand in every tournament they shoot 85 or they shoot 80. Right. And then you get these kids who are just competitive and scrappy who, you know, whose swings are a work in progress and they go out and just, you know, grind out of 72 when it should have been 82. So like, I can't, I, you know, you lose a lot of that with all the technology I think we have and the way instruction goes. Um, you know, when I was a kid growing up, like we didn't know what a golf lesson was. We just got dropped off at the range and chipped and putted and, you know, kind of competed. So I think that's valuable, I'm, you know, so for the viewers out there, if you know a junior who's good or you have a kid that's up and coming, um, don't isolate them. You know, Kevin's doing a great job of bringing them together and creating that competitive team environment. I'm sure some of the relationships they make there, they're lifelong. I mean, you know, I know my golfing friends from when I was in high school and middle school and college, like they're still some of my, you know, I think my whole wedding party was like, six out of eight of them was you know golfers so um no i think that's great stuff i love that concept yeah and i love that country club spartanburg is so supportive of junior golf because i've worked at 15 or 16 different golf courses in my life and i always noticed that the clubs that allowed and encouraged kids to play they would always blossom into these great teams like i play here at smithfield country club in easley they've won two state tournaments in the last 15 years well, it's a small town here. How does this team win a state South Carolina tournament? But the culture of kids out there playing and pushing themselves, even going back to my childhood, I was, I was fortunate to find golf through friends. And because there's so many good players at my age at that time, I didn't want to fall behind. So I wanted to keep up with them. So it, you know, it pushed me forward. So I love this opportunity for more kids to play and more kids to develop the game because they'll push each other. And then you're there to provide the structure and the format and the direction. So, yeah, this is uh, this is good stuff. Um, we probably got just a couple minutes left, guys, but uh, I really enjoyed talking to you both because, again, you're both two guys that impressed me so much as to how you go about your professional life and what you're doing for the world of golf. So I appreciate that. And 
Kevin, is there anything else that we can chat about quickly before we wind her down? Uh, no, not that I can think of, Jim. It's, it, you know, I just, I just think you guys are doing such a great job promoting your products. Your products, uh, I mean, I literally use daily and highly recommend, you know, all your, all your products to anybody that teaches. Uh, it's uh, the original Orange Whip. I mean, I think I have the old one with the old pool ball on the bottom, but uh, the cue ball. <laughs> That's a classic. <laughs> I had so long, I think it rotted away. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a big fan as in what you're doing and doing for the game and Brian with the GFX. I mean, it's great stuff. So just glad to be Thank a small you. and uh, any help you guys, please let me know. Thank yeah. you. Thank well, you I know so I much. keep threatening you to come up and, and mess around at your facility and obviously the, uh, you know, hopefully I can start traveling again. I've come on full time with the company. So uh, we actually just relocated down to Florida. So hopefully I can come up, see your operation and, um, you know, help you guys with some GFX programs like we've talked about. So thanks for your support. Uh, always fun to talk to you. And uh, we'll keep sending you some stuff and um, let us know what else we can do to help you teach the game. Thank you very much, man. It's a pleasure. Thanks, awesome. Kevin. Thank we you. Appreciate it, thanks, man. Jim. Thanks, Brian. Bye.